Okay, so let's start. I'm speaking myself in right now. <laughs> um, let's see how this mic is going. Okay, so uh, lean method for building good APIs for business, API of cycles is, is the uh, topic. And I'm Marek Konina. I'm from Osango, founding partner and Apitalista uh, at Osango and community manager of API Ops community. And we have some meetups and we have a blog and site and all kinds of good things. Uh, just before I forget, the next meetup is on uh, 18th of June in Helsinki, uh, sponsored by Vaisalo and uh, UpCloud. And it's related to the Inspire conference and geospatial APIs. There's a new cool geospatial API standard that is restish and not the old kind of horrible one that nobody could use. Uh, but hey, let's go to the topic of today. There's something funny going on with this mic. It's my big Greek nose, uh, so that's the problem probably. Um, and then there's another problem. <laughs> this clicker is, well, okay. Yes, okay, that, that one works. Okay, better clicker. Good. So, um, yeah, I've been working in a lot of different positions related to APIs. So, uh, as an API and integration and in enterprise information architect, um, API product manager, developer even. Um, I learned to code when I was eight, just the point that Fran was like 11 old. Um, I got an IBM 8088 uh, PC from my uncle. It was a used one, but hey, you could code with it. Um, I have been a, a manager, a project manager, consultant, and currently I'm like consulting and architecting, training, speaking, authoring, doing all kinds of weird things like these events. And um, we have a team. You might have seen some of them in the blue shirts here. And uh, I have consulted and trained uh, or advised approximately 200 and plus companies and public sector organizations on these things. So um, as you might have heard me mention and some others also mention and tweet about this book. So I was one of the writers of the API Economy 101 book. And um, I'm not mentioning it because it's the best book ever, but more like why we decided to even write it. And the uh, reason was that we found out that there was a lot of um, misunderstandings related to APIs, like what is the proper term, like what does open API mean? What is the difference between open data API? Is public API a public sector API, like all the people from public sector seem to think? Um, and how you will actually handle uh, the business side of APIs. What is the business impact of APIs? What is the organizational change impact of APIs and culture change impact? But also a lot of uh, seemingly technical things like authentication or distributed or, or non-distributed management. But actually they all come from business requirements and they all have impacts on the organization, culture, products, services, all of the, the things that make up a company and a business model. The API of cycles uh, method that I'm going to talk about was born because I was uh, fed up <laughs> with all the questions. Like uh, I, was, I was basically working uh, at that moment in Kesko, uh, the retail store, and, and we were doing hardware store APIs and a lot of other things. There and a lot of teams from different companies were doing those APIs, and we somehow managed to do them. It wasn't easy, but then I got uh, asked that, how did you guys do it? How did you make them? Like, can you teach us too how to make them? And the, the developers in all, the, all of those companies were really happy on how we actually made them and they hadn't necessarily made any APIs before that, or very few ones. And um, I realized that I hadn't got a clue how, how to teach anybody else to do that. I'm going to tell you more about how that came to be and what happened then. But uh, why business, why lean, and what's the method? So API economy runs on ecosystems and customer journeys. 
That is what API economy specifically does. Uh, APIs, of course, can do a bunch of other things too. They can be very low level. We have had infrastructure APIs and other things here. But what you can do is you can buy, sell, steal, borrow, you know, do anything that you could do with a traditional goods or, or uh, a physical product. But you can do a lot of things with APIs and form up your uh, ecosystem and form up your journey. I was asked by an insurance company um, in Finland some years ago that, is it now okay that we actually work with another bank's API, like, like do something, some cooperation with another bank that what we have used to do? And um, I said, well, probably yes, because open banking is there. Like the CEO of your company doesn't go, have to go to the sauna with the, the CEO of the other company to make uh, some kind of joint operations, but still, you might end up doing something on a kind of more higher level before you actually can do something with the API, even though you have access to it. So it's not, of course, that easy. Uh, to make all of these APIs, I feel that it would have been good to have this magic bill about 10 to 20 years ago. Uh, I went to work in the Finnish agriculture and forestry um, sector when European Union uh, came to Finland, so basically we had to set up all those systems and, and operations and organizations. I see some of my colleagues here uh, from that time who are still working on those uh, systems, and we literally had no idea what the heck we were doing. So uh, we had to study it, and we had to cooperate with a lot of organizations, both public sector and, and private sector. And it wasn't easy, but it taught me that humans and organizations are the problem not the technical stuff. So we could design a very semantically interoperable web service and what's not, uh, but when I called the tax office at that time uh, and asked, hi, I want to uh, harmonize our company data model with like this agriculture company like Farms and these other companies that you hold, the answer was, what, what the heck are you calling here for? Uh, we need to have like a formal committee and like to have discussions and we are not going to work with you guys. And I was like, okay, just asking, <laughs> don't kill me. Um, nowadays I know that there, there are some smart people there. That wouldn't be the answer right now, but back in the day that was the problem. Also when uh, I started doing my, our team uh, started doing first REST APIs 10 years ago, uh, we had, again, no clue what we were doing. We literally like had this uh, day when my developers came to me and said, hi, we are going to have some APIs. I was like, is it a boy or girl? Um, I mean, literally, like, what, what, what are APIs? What are we doing? Why are we doing them? And then they were kind of born quite accidentally. And well, we lived with them, we learned from them, and then we redid them some years back. Uh, because we actually got some feedback from partners and, and there was actually more standards about on how to make them. And this is what makes the next slide. So uh, oftentimes the API design is considered to be like an art form. Like anybody can just design whatever they want to do or it's a very engineering thing. Like, okay, there's this status and this type and it's like type five and um, then there's this ID, I don't know what ID it is, but it's an ID, and that's a good API. Let's just throw in some JSON and authentication and we are good to go. Um, and, and like those are not maybe always the best ways to go, but it's not an art form. There's an actual science. There's like Richardson maturity model. There is uh, Fielding's thesis on it. There's a lot of stuff actually research written and, and uh, like best practice is done. But if you grab a random blog of the internet, the chances are you get uh, five-year-old stuff, two-year-old stuff, an opinion or other things that you don't really know if you should use them or not. So, I was asked all these questions and I had answers, but I didn't have a way to co uh, communicate and teach others to do that. So when I was in Digia, um, and setting up the, the, like helping Digia basically transform from integration uh, player to an API management and API player, um, we, we did this method and I tapped into my like 
I'm actually Master of Education, not Master of Computer Science. Um, and I tapped into that method and training, and, and I realized that uh, what it does to make an expert, it makes um, an expert if you have the skills, you have the motivation, but also if you have a method. Uh, I just want to show this shirt. Because um, how many in the audience have made their own shirt ever? Okay, some. So you might know that it's not as easy as you would think it is. It's not just, you know, taking pieces of stuff and sewing them together. Um, I ordered this online, this shirt, with a nice logo there. The problem was that they didn't have a proper process. The uh, sleeves are actually the wrong way up. So this is the, the wrong side of the fabric. And also, uh, the hemming here, like, this is, like, crappy, totally. If you, if you ever sewn anything, you know. Um, maybe if you're a woman, you know. I don't know. This is sexist, but anyway. Um, so what you need to do anything well is to have a proper process. And I could say that because I'm a woman, by the way, just pointing out. Okay, uh, but this is uh, the research that kind of woke me up. Uh, we looked at this when we were looking, uh, doing the book, and uh, it's frightening because you see all those uh, dots in the uh, Northern America, especially in, in a certain parts of Northern America, also in France, probably all because of API days, Paris and API days, <laughs> other, other places, but uh, there's actually some research on why this is um, and why it's really important to have APIs from like economical point of view. And the amount of APIs actually correlates with global startup index and economic growth areas. Like if you look at Silicon Valley, there's a lot of APIs there. And APIs thrive in cultures where user-centered design is dominant. What does this mean? User-centered design. What the heck does that mean have to do with APIs? Um, but it does actually because mashups combining several APIs require a certain amount of co-location and mindset from marketers and developers to co-create. Marketers people, marketers. Uh, the most common answer that I get when I ask how is your developer experience doing in the company when we do these reviews for customers is that uh, we have such good developers that we are doing really good. And that's fine, but that's only like one third, maybe, of the developer experience that ends up when you actually start sharing the uh, APIs with others. And, and that one third is the technical design and, and that they actually work. So in the API cycles, we uh, put together certain things that actually are understandable for both business designers technical people, uh, uh, so like from coders to architects. And we used lean startup, uh, minimum viable architecture, uh, API, uh, like business model canvases, value proposition canvas, which is used in product management, API as a product, you, you remember. Um, and we put them into a process where you have certain methods and certain steps in the process. And if you do everything in this order, you should be good to go. You will actually uh, even get the developer experience in shape. You will only build those APIs that you really need. Because I like to kill them early, like really young. Because the world is a better place if we don't have unnecessary, unnecessary APIs around. And I mean very, very bad behaving APIs. So now you might ask, why the, do we need a uh, method for APIs. So there are 10 reasons. So one was the t-shirt, or like the shirt, uh, to minimize waste and to do things right the first time. So this is the lean thinking uh, in the core. So you only do things once and you don't uh, create waste. So you check every phase and you have a method. And in APIs, like what happens is that the docs don't match the reality or you will end up doing things that nobody will use. Then there's this problem called maalaisjärki, 
village sense. So what does this mean and why, why it's relevant to APIs? So um, Fran was actually kind of stealing my <laughs> case here, but uh, there is this request response protocol thing. So uh, Baptiste and, and the French dudes here from the API Days Global were asking me that how do you say hello in, in Finland? Like, how do you greet a person? Do you, like, kiss both cheeks or one cheek? Or what do you do? Or how, do you hug or something? I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> You're like, the person is, well, Emeline, you are there, yeah? So I would go, like, moi. And you would stay there, preferably, and say moi. And that would be, like, the proper request response model in Finland, wouldn't be. So the point I'm making is that, uh, we all have different, we're coming from different villages. We are doing di things differently. We have all the, the different kind of common sense. And this is the one thing that all the lead developers, for example, tell me that it's common sense how to make APIs. Everybody knows that. Well, they are the lead developers, I, I tell you. They are not the junior developer or the developer who was just doing integration and moved to APIs or the UI guy who has to do the APIs because there's no one else to do the APIs or something like that. So really, it's not common sense. Uh, so this is the point. We co come from different villages. And I just want to say that this is a very good way to kind of think about it. If you come from Helsinki, you say moi. If you come from Tampere, you say moro. And if, if like a person from Helsinki and Tampere meet, it, it's a bit confusing, you know? Uh, maybe not as confusing as a person from Turku or somewhere, but um, this is the problem. And in APIs, this is what it looks like. These are all collected from uh, Finnish APIs, Finnish organizations' APIs. This is the problem we have that you have like uh, a lot of attributes, a lot of sensitive information. You have like basic auth is just fine for authentication. Um, then this, my favorite, uh, when we get new API users, we need to reboot our servers to give them access. And oh, but, but it's election time in Finland. We can't do that. So um, yeah, these, these are the things that we get when we copy paste uh, other people's APIs and don't really think what's going on on the business side of things. That post ad, post Dell is actually my husband. I, I caught him in our bedroom doing those APIs. Uh, and he was copy pasting them from like, somewhere in, from a production API and said, what are you doing? Stop doing that. So if we build the APIs with the right method, we don't end up like this. And we end up uh, in a better situation like here, where we had a real project where suddenly uh, at the end of the project, people realized that, hey, it's going to be um, going over time because actually somebody can't use these APIs. Uh, that we did just designed, we forgot to ask them. This is the user-centric and the developer experience thing got built into the project, so you get it right. You actually prototype first and you ask certain questions and all of that is built into the method. So um, this is the case where we might be in. So somebody has a bright idea, let's build APIs. This is like Emeline had like the situation uh, where, where the CEO says, yes, let's build APIs. And then we have the confused developers wondering what was going on. Um, and then the real confusion is when you actually start looking at it from product and services point of view, because API is, well, it might be a product, but actually it can be part of your product, it can be part of your service, it can be a lot of different things. This is from the book, so I'm going to go through it in detail. Uh, then you have the very confused sales guys. This is from our customers, actually. We have a lot of customers who come to us and say, we have this problem, we, we don't know what to do with our APIs, we want more users, but we don't know how to really tell our sales guys what to do with it, uh, because there is no value proposition defined for the API. And uh, this is like, you could have all of these APIs ongoing. This is the terminology uh, confusion. So you should really define what you are doing and how it impacts the uh, actual technical uh, abilities and management abilities there. Uh, but also that you don't 
uh, build anything that you shouldn't be offering to other people. So this is from real life again. A lot of companies are actually, and organizations are like throwing their whole database into the API because just because we have it. And then the other parties are left wondering what the heck we do with all of this. And then there's a lot of questions, a lot of unnecessary questions, a lot of code being uh, tied into these, all these attributes. And when something changes, it's a big change and you can't really um, do any, any uh, small changes there without destroying everything. So if all of that is true, then you might end up into this situation where like the, the va value of the APIs is not there. You were having this big dream, big API strategy, but actually uh, you ended up with like just a big mess and you didn't actually involve all the people that you need to involve. Like uh, Hanna was telling in the morning about this real project where they had um, customer experience and user experience and business and, and uh, architecture. That should be the case with all the API efforts that we do. You should not just have a bunch of developers in one corner and uh, designers in other corner and then uh, business people somewhere else and not talking to each other. And that is what the method is trying to help you do in a very uh, coordinated fashion. Then the DevOps people in the audience might think, why API ops? Why not just DevOps? Because APIs actually need DevOps two times. There's the interface and then there's a the code that implements the interface. You need to think about that and you need to automate all the, all the uh, layers there. So this is the method and you'll find it in the site. It's Creative Commons license, so you're free to use it. Uh, if you need any help or any background information here, uh, so if you need any help with it, I'll just show a few slides quickly. Uh, these are some of the canvases. This is the prototyping just enough and scaling phase there, some checklist included, and uh, some uh, non-functional requirements uh, slates here. So the idea is that everything is so easy and made from a business point of view that you can really fast go through with it with people who do not have architecture backgrounds necessarily. Uh, and there's even more uh, around it. So the point is to connect the APIs with business and with uh, user goals and IT strategy. And then if you need any help, we have certification partner program where Digia and Ferrologic are partners, Finland, Nordics, Benelux, and then of course us in Osango, and more to come. And this is where you could go to learn in the meanwhile. So apieconomy.info has a course that is made with Tampere University. Um, and this picture is from a customer journey turned into developer journey, just there. So thank you. Any questions? I'm asking myself here. Kim here is ready to. Give the mic.